This means doing the right things in the right order. For example, think about lighting in an office. If you're trying to read something and it's a bit difficult because of fuzzy print, maybe we need to clean the dust out of the photocopier optics. And maybe there's something glaring in our computer screen, so we need to move things around in the room so the bright thing isn't behind us anymore or use lighter colored surfaces to bounce the light round better. Most important, we need to improve the lighting quality. What enables me to read is not light but contrast between ink and paper. So if I do down light, dumping light in the space like this, um, I will get a lot of bundles of rays that are just at that wrong angle to glare off the paper and kill the contrast so I can't read properly. That, that's called a veiling reflection. Whereas if I were to light upwards, Light would come from everywhere on the ceiling, and hardly any of the rays would cause a veiling reflection. So I'll get typically about seven times as much visual effectiveness. That is, I could see as well with a seventh as much light. Uh, or discomfort glare. If there are unpleasantly bright things within your field of view, you can tell because when you come into the office and pretend you have on a, a, a peaked uh, uh, cap, your face muscles relax. That means the room failed the test and uh, those bright things need not to be there. Then, of course, we need to optimize the amount of light, which depends on the difficulty of the task and how tired you are and how old you are and so on. Then we can harvest and distribute natural light, and then we can get around to optimizing the luminaires, converting electricity into light. Most people start there, and maybe they get around to controls, maintenance, training, and the lost Victorian art of operating Venetian blinds. But Actually, if you go back to the Illuminating Engineering Society Handbook of Fundamentals, Chapter 1, you'll find this is the right order to do things in if you want to save the most energy and the most capex, but most people do it the opposite way up, worst buys first. So they don't save the capex and they don't save much energy. Here's an interesting daylight example for a primary school in Curitiba, Brazil, where we did a little retrofit. You notice that the roof overhang is not deep enough to shade the windows properly. So this one's getting glare coming in. And over here, we put on an exterior shade to correct that. Now let's go inside and look at these two classrooms side by side, both with the lights off. In, in the classroom where the window is not shaded, there's so much glare that it makes your iris stop down. Uh, and the luminance ratio is so extreme that you can't really see anything without turning on the lights. Whereas in the other classroom, under the same conditions, we actually not just had the exterior shelf, we added an interior light shelf continuing that line through the class line and bouncing the light up onto the ceiling as God intended. So you get quite a nice even illuminance all the way back, uh, moderate luminance ratios. And again, with no lights on, you can see just fine. But the lower classroom saves three quarters of the electricity, so now they can afford to buy books. What a concept. And if you think about the multiplier from education to democracy and prosperity, the, the sort of thing Singapore is proving for the world, these uh, little white painted bits of metal or plastic or uh, wood start to look pretty important. Why don't all our schools look like this? <laughs>